okay welcome back to the today's class today we will be starting the new unit the second unit which is nothing ac circuits first we will be seeing about ac circuit fundamentals in ac circuit fundamentals we will be seeing about the faraday's law uh, which is the very basic law for the generation of ac voltage you all know faraday's law any change in magnetic environment of a wire will cause emf to be induced in the coil change could be produced by changing the magnetic field strength moving a magnet towards or away from coil moving a coil into or out of magnetic field rotating coil relative to the magnet so faraday's law states that if you are having a coil and a magnet then the coil can be produce a induced emf when the magnet is moved through the coil okay if you have a coil and a magnet and the coil is moved or the magnet is moved the magnetic flux will cut the coil okay and so now the coil will produce a electromagnetic force which is nothing but the voltage okay so there are two ways to produce the voltage in a coil what are the ways first one is to move the coil with, with the magnet fixed okay if your magnet is fixed and your coil is rotating then the coil will produce a electromagnetic voltage which is nothing but the induced voltage okay otherwise if the coil is fixed and the magnet is moving then also a voltage will be induced in the coil so as per the faraday's law any change in magnetic environment of a coil or a wire will cause us an emf to be induced in the coil so the change in magnetic field across a coil or a wire will cause a induced emf in a coil or a wire so the faraday's law is shown like that okay so today we will be going to see how the alternating current is going to be produced using the principle of faraday's law okay this is the coil this is a single turn coil because we are having only one turn in the coil okay uh, here you see the sides of the coil the coil side a and b is known as conductor 2 and the coil side c and d is known as conductor 1 and uh, here the connector between c and a is known as connector okay if a coil is present there will be two conductors so a coil has two conductors okay uh, here after this b and d end there are two output terminals from the coil and these two output terminals are connected to the slip rings there will be two slip rings c1 and c2 which is connected from the two terminals of the coil b and d okay uh, this is the single turn alternator you have already seen or studied this uh, generation of current in a physics when you are studying 12th expense okay uh, here also we will be having the same thing same principle everything is same okay uh, today i'll be just explaining you how the alternating current is produced by the single turn alternator okay we know that uh, according to faraday's law when the magnet is fixed you see here is the magnet north pole of the magnet and here at the bottom end you see the south pole of the magnet the magnet is fixed and the coil is being rotated in the in the presence of magnetic field so uh, north and south poles are present and the magnetic field are represented by down arrows okay uh, if the ma magnet is fixed and here is the coil you see the coil is here you see the conductor a and b is here and conductor c and d is here and 
here from C to D, C to A, a connector is present. And at the end of the conductors, uh, D and B, two slip rings are present. Okay, this is one slip ring, and this is another one slip ring. And uh, here you see a shaft. This is the center point, and you see a shaft over here. So the coil, then the slip ring is, is connected to the shaft. Okay, it is aligned center to the shaft. So if the shaft is rotated, then the entire setup will start to rotate in clockwise or anti-clockwise direction. You can rotate this thing in any direction. For uh, study purpose, we are going to rotate in anti-clockwise direction. Okay. Uh, here in the slip rings, you see there are two brushes. Here is one brush and another one brush is over here. Okay, these brushes are named as P and Q brushes. Okay, these two brushes are connected to the external resistance R and the current I is flowing through the resistance when a voltage is induced in the coil. Okay, uh, the total setup is like this. There are two magnets, North, north Pole is upper and south pole is down uh, a center shaft is present in the center shaft uh, there is a single turn coil and the coil is connected to the slip rings which is present in the shaft and from the shaft sorry and from the slip ring two brushes are connected and the two slip rings are connected to the resistance uh, which is used to uh, consume the power which is generated by the single turn coil okay if the coil generates uh, electromotive force that is the voltage is generated in the coil then the current will flow through the resistor okay this is the basic principle okay uh, here uh, you need to see here the magnets are fixed okay and the uh, magnetic field is also fixed okay what is going to change as per faraday's law if the magnets are fixed and the coil is being rotated irrespective of the magnetic field, then uh, EMF is produced in the terminals of the conductor D and B. So here we are going to fix the magnet as it is. North pole and south pole is fixed, but the conductors, the center end, that is the coil, uh, A, B, C, D is going to rotate it, and the EMF is going to produced in the conductor and so this EMF is transferred to the slip ring and from the slip ring it is transferred to the brushes and from the brushes it is going to be powered the resistor which is present in the external circuit. So this is the complete setup of the single turn alternator. Okay, let us uh, study how this alternator will generate power in each steps. Okay. Uh, now, for the study purpose, we are using a very simple explanation block. Here you see this is the north pole of the magnet and here one is the south pole of the magnet and you see the conductor is present over here. Okay, uh, now the conductor is perpendicular to the flux. Okay, sorry, uh, now the conductor is parallel to the flux. How it is parallel is if you see the axial direction here, the arrow, the flux is also in the same way. So the conductor is parallel to the flux at the instant one. Okay, uh, at the instant one, this is the instant one. Okay, at this instant one, you see the two conductors A, B and C, D, which is present in the coil is parallel to the flux. So at this position, uh, the EMF which is induced will be equivalent to zero because there is no change in EMF. Okay, there is no change in EMF uh, produced in the conductor. So if you see this graph uh, at the position of theta equal to zero, you see here this is the theta line that is the x-axis. At theta is equal to zero, you see the voltage which is produced by the conductor C, D and A, B is zero because as per Faraday's law there is no change in magnetic flux present in the coil because the magnetic flux of lines are 
parallel to the conductor how it is parallel i am saying is you see the magnetic flux of line is from north pole to south pole okay whereas you see the conductor is these two lines okay these two conductor fields are also parallel okay it is not perpendicular it is parallel to the magnetic flux so in this condition the emf produced by the coil that is the induced voltage produced by the coil will be zero okay then now move to the instant two if you see the instant two now the coil that is the conductor or coil is being rotated in the anti clockwise direction okay in this anti clockwise direction of rotation the conductor is being uh, rotated for a some theta angle which is less than 90 degree but greater than 0 degree so uh, if this conductor or a coil a b c d is rotated for some theta angle which is less than 90 degree but greater than 0 degree say 45 degree okay if this is a uh, rotated for a 45 degree then what is happening is you see the magnetic field which is present here okay uh, is going to cut the conductors okay you see uh, in the previous figure you see the two magnetic lines of force are parallel to each other so the net voltage produced is zero but in instant two you see these uh, two magnetic lines of force are not parallel because uh, you see the angle over here is like this see the voltage v1 is like this whereas the magnetic field is like this okay so the now the magnetic field will cut the conductor or coil so uh, as per the faraday's law if there is a change in magnetic field along the coil at once what will happen is a emf is produced in the conductor a b and c d so this emf is represented here okay in the graph you see at the instant two this one is the instant two okay at the instant two you see some amount of emf is generated okay at instant two you can see some amount of emf is generated and some amount of voltage is present in the coil so this coil is connected with the slip ring you know that so in the slip ring this uh, current will start to flow through the resistor which is connected in the external circuit as the figure is shown in the first slide okay now let us move to the instant three at the instant three you see the coil is sharply at 90 degree now the angle of rotation of the coil or the conductor is at 90 degree so at this position you see the conductor uh, is present like this whereas the magnetic field of lines from the north pole to south pole is coming through this direction so at this point you see the conductor is being cut by perpendicular okay so when the magnetic flux cut the con conductor in perpendicular direction at once a high magnetic field or a high emf is induced which is denoted as positive direction in positive direction at a 90 degree you see the terminals a b is very close to the north pole whereas CD is close to the south pole. So the current starts to flow from AB to CD. So at this position, you see the positive peak of the sine wave is being represented. And this is represented as plus E max. Okay. So uh, when the flux is being cut, that is the magnetic flux is being cut the conductor in perpendicular direction at this position theta will be equivalent to 90 degree and at this position the magnetic flux linkage with the conductor is maximum because it is in perpendicular direction so 
this will cause a very high induced emf and this is represented as the peak value of the sine wave which is nothing but plus e max okay uh, next in the instant four what you are having is now the conductor is being uh, moved to an angle which is less than 180 degree but greater than 90 degree so at this position say theta is equivalent to 120 degree so uh, at the position 4 you see at the position 4 you can see the theta is 120 degree and at this 120 degree position the magnetic flux which are linking the coil starts to decreases because you see the coil is like this in this position whereas the magnetic flux linkage is this position so due to this the flux induced that is the magnetic voltage induced and the emf induced and the flux linkages in the coil gets a decreases as before in the previous third position so due to this the emf induced in the coil get decreased so uh, you see at the third position we will get a lesser voltage when compared to the third sorry if you compare the fourth position and the third position uh, you see at the fourth instant we will get a lesser voltage than the third instant because in the third instant you see uh, the uh, magnetic lines of force is perpendicular whereas in the fourth position the magnetic lines of force are not perpendicular it has some angle deviation from the previous one so due to this you will get the voltage which is lesser than the third instant uh, and see uh, now the current starts to decreases uh, for the previous case in the second case you need to compare in the second case what happening is the current starts to rise up okay uh, that is the voltage starts to rise up so the uh, voltage so the current starts to flow from a b c d direction in the second position the voltage rises at maximum level and the current is also from a b to c d direction okay in the third position also you see the AB conductor is near the North Pole, CD conductor is near the South Pole. But what happening is the voltage starts to decrease because it is the conductor is not in perpendicular direction. It is having a some theta angle deflection. So due to this, the voltage starts to drop. In the fifth position, what happening is uh, the conductor returns back to the same as in theta is equal to 0 degree because now theta is equal to 180 degree and theta is equal to 0 degree the conductor lines of flux the conductor and the magnetic lines of flux are in parallel so due to this paralleling of two things what happens is the net emf voltage produced will be zero so at the fifth instant what is happening is the net voltage produced will becomes zero okay uh, when at the sixth instant what happening here is you see uh, the conductor terminals a b is coming near the south pole whereas the conductor terminal c d is coming near the north pole so uh, due to this complete uh, uh, movement of the conductor that is the rotation of the conductor and the conductor positions have been changed so that the AB is near the south pole and the conductor CD is near the south pole now the current direction starts to get reversed so you are getting a reverse peak in voltage so this is the uh, uh, very cause to create a negative peak so you see here in the fourth position the conductor terminal is at an no, ab is at north uh, north pole where cd is at south pole okay where in the sixth instant you see the conductor terminal ab is near south pole and the conductor terminal cd is near north pole so 
due to this uh, physical movement of conductor and the rotation of conductor from north pole towards the south pole in anti clockwise direction so you have a negative peak so if you see here uh, the magnetic lines of flows cutting the conductor has a angle uh, so if you see here the movement of the conductor is uh, less than 270 degree but greater than 180 degree so you can say the conductor is moved to a 200 degree so if, uh, if the conductor is moved uh, to 200 degree irrespective of magnetic lines of force so you will get a terminal at sixth position and at this position you will get a more a lesser amount of voltage in the negative terminal okay in the negative terminal you get some voltage okay in the next position what will happen is the conductor cd is going to be perpendicular to the north terminal and the conductor ab is going to be perpendicular in the south terminal okay due to this what happen is you will get a in the seventh position what you have is a negative peak okay a negative peak will be arised and so the complete of completion of the sine wave is being as in the previous case okay uh, the conductor starts from zero degree to 360 degree by passing uh, step by step so the voltage starts to move step by step and reaches its positive value when conductor AB is near the North Pole and conductor CD is near the South Pole and the magnetic lines of force is perpendicular. Okay, after that position, the conductor starts to rotate back and it becomes parallel to the lines of flux. So at this position, you will get a 180 degree. So at 180 degree and zero degree, the conductor will be in parallel to the magnetic lines of force so you will not get voltage which is zero volt after this position a complete rotation of conductor will take place and so now the conductor starts to rotate in such a way that the position ab is near the south pole and cd is near the north pole due to this you will get a negative value in the sine wave so uh, when you reach the seventh position what happen is the conductor ab will be in south position and cd will be in north position due to this a uh, perpendicular cutting of conductor will be present but the conductor has been rotated to a complete shift so you will get a negative peak in voltage of the sine wave so this causes the sine wave to be produced as shown, thank you.